Welcome to Sunday Worship from the Kingsthorpe Team Ministry. My name's Reverend Rachel and this morning's worship on Palm Sunday is coming from the Vicarage here at St David's. So a warm welcome to you. On Palm Sunday we think about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem where people greeted him as their king with shouts of Hosanna to the son of David. It was a joyous celebration but one that marks the beginning of Jesus' journey to the cross. Jesus enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour. So during the service this morning, you like, might like to have a, a palm cross uh, ready to hold when we bless the crosses um, during the uh, service today. Or if you haven't got a palm cross, uh, you can make one easily by just a draw them round the palm of your hand uh, and use this uh, as a palm uh, today. But perhaps the most important thing is to, to find a quiet space and be comfortable and ready to worship and open your hearts to Jesus' presence today. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. You might like to light a candle. As God's people we have gathered. Let us worship God now together across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus let us examine ourselves and confess our sins bringing before God those things that we are sorry for. We say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but have now 
have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. At this point you may like to, to take your palm cross and hold it as we bless them together. Let us pray. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Today's reading is from Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem near the town of Bethphage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to his, two of his disciples on ahead, with these instructions, go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you are doing that, say that the master needs it and it will... And and it, send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street and tied to the door of the house. They were untying it and some of the bystanders asked them, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them and the crow crowd let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread out their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches in the fields and spread them out on the road. People who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming of the kingdom, King of David, our Father, Praise be to God. This is the word of the Lord.
now have the Passion Reading for Palm Sunday. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even there, even death on a cross. Therefore God has exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the woman, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than a hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was the one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where's my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table and eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It's one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. And then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for this is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if... All fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster 
crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter instead emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you and all all the others said the same. So they went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter and James and John along with him, and he began to be de deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. And going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass for him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. And returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting in her? The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is a man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing nearby drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scripture must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Then Jesus was taken to the high priest's house, where all the chief priests, the elders and the teachers of the law were gathering. Peter followed from a distance and went into the courtyard of the high priest's house. There he sat down with the guards keeping himself warm by the fire. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they could not find any. Many witnesses told lies against Jesus, but their stories did not agree. Then some men stood up and told this lie against Jesus. We heard him say, I will tear down this temple which men have made, and after three days... I will build one that is not made by men. Not even they, however, could make their stories agree. The high priest stood up in front of them all and questioned Jesus. Have you no answer to the accusation they bring against you? But Jesus kept quiet and would not say a word. Again the high priest questioned him. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed God? I am answered Jesus, and you will all see the Son of Man, seated on the right of the Almighty, and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, We don't need any more witnesses. You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? They all voted against him. He was guilty and should be put to death. Some of them began to spit on Jesus and they blindfolded him and hit him. Guess who hit you, they said, and the guards took him and slapped him. 
Peter was still down in the courtyard when one of the high priest's servant women came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked straight at him and said, You too were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it. I don't know, I don't understand what you're talking about, he answered and went out into the passage. Just then a cock crowed. The servant woman saw him there and began to repeat to the bystanders. He is one of them, but Peter denied it again. A little while later the bystanders accused Peter again. You can't deny that you are one of them, because you too are from Galilee. Then Peter said, I swear that I'm telling the truth. May God punish me if I'm not. I don't know the man you are talking about. Just then a cock crowed for a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will say three times that you do not know me. And he broke down and cried. Jesus before Pilate Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was imprisoned with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing that it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed over Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus inside to the courtyard of the governor's palace and called the together the rest of the company. They put a purple robe on Jesus and made a crown out of thorny branches and put it on his head then they began to salute him long life live the king of jews they beat him over the head with a stick spat on him felt on their knees and bowed down to him when they had finished making fun of him, they took the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in, in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. 
He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the king, this king of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may believe and see those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way, he breathed his last, he said. Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salomon. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. The Burial of Jesus It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid.
Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Let us pray. Loving God, your son Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey as a different kind of king. You call your followers to be different too. So we pray for the church that Christians may bear the fruit of your spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Take firm root in our lives, that we may lovingly serve and welcome all, with no exceptions and no small print. May we live together in your love and shine as lights in darkness to reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, at the Last Supper, Jesus washed his disciples' feet as an example of service. We pray for all those who serve at this time, all those in the NHS, social care and other essential services, and all who volunteer or are, who are good neighbours. We thank you for their compassionate love and ask that you will continue to bless their work and to equip them with the energy and determination they need to go on rising to the needs of the hour. Will you help everyone to seek the common good? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus experienced distress and anguish over what was laying ahead. We pray for all who are experiencing distress and anguish at this present time. All those with the virus, at home or in hospital. Those fearful for others. Those whose jobs have vanished. Those whose jobs are no longer viable. We thank you for all the efforts made on their behalf and pray that they may all receive your peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in Jesus you love the whole world. So we continue to pray for those areas where normal daily life is violence, war and grinding poverty. We continue to pray for situations across the world where there is unrest. We pray that as we approach Easter, peace may begin to take root, even in those darkest places. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Loving God, on the cross as Jesus died, your glory was filled. Thank you that he was obedient to death and that you raised him on high so we know that not even death can separate us from your love. You have redeemed us by love. Jesus is the light of the world, a light which eternally shines and brings hope that no darkness can quench. Today we commend all who have died to your eternal joy and care. We remember all virus victims, our loved ones and our friends. You turn our darkness into light and in your light shall we see light. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We bring our thoughts and prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We now come to our spiritual communion. So you may like to have a cup and saucer at home ready to hold. Jesus says, Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you, and you with me. Lord our God, you prepare a table before us, and although we cannot be present at your Holy Eucharist, by your grace, open our hearts to receive the gift of your Son, the Word made flesh. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you led us into the desert of repentance, and through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant, radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of him. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, that though separated by distance, we may still, through faith, be partakers in the benefits of Christ's offering of his body and his blood. This we ask through the same Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. 
we say together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and you share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant us grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil. And with pure hearts and minds may we follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
final blessing. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if you would like to join in the Zoom coffee after this service, it's at 11.15. This week, um, as we enter Holy Week, there will be services in our church buildings again on Monday, Thursday and on Easter Day. Uh, so look out for details of those services um, in emails and on our website. But I just wish you now um, a good day on Palm Sunday. Bye-bye for now.